my name is Peter Dickey, President and CEO of Quantum Rare Earth Developments Corp. Now, the rare earth elements are a series of uh, minerals that are, uh, despite their name, they're not rare. Uh, they are critical in high-tech usages, in uh, green technology uses, and they're becoming more and more the standard and the uh, fall-to mineral due to their unique properties. Niobium is a somewhat related metal. Uh, it's not part of the rare earth element group but it is considered a uh, rare metal uh, because of its lack of uh, discoveries in the world. There's currently only three mines producing it and there's a very limited number of opportunities out there right now where discoveries have been made. Niobium is primarily used as a steel hardener. Uh, as, as such, uh, it does have some competing metals such as vanadium or molybdenum, vanadium being the closest competitor. However, the properties of the steel produced using niobium uh, generate some unique uses. Oil and gas high pressure pipelines as a, is a uh, perfect example of the necessity of niobium moving forward in the economy. The only additive that you can use with steel to produce these high pressure, high strength uh, gas and oil pipelines is niobium because of the unique properties. In addition, what is created with the high strength niobium based alloy steels is a stronger yet lighter steel. Therefore, you can use niobium hardened steel to produce an automobile with, as an example, using as little as nine or ten dollars worth of niobium will produce potentially a five percent fuel savings in your vehicle because of the weight reduction, yet you're not losing any strength. In addition, as an alloy, niobium is critical to the aerospace industry. For example, you can't build a jet thruster without uh, significant amounts of niobium. Well, we've just recently released a brand new resource estimate. Uh, this gives us a, a new resource of over 19 million tons of 0.67% niobium, uh, which uh, contains in excess of 129 million kilograms of niobium. In addition, that's an indicated resource. In addition, we have an inferred resource of over 83 million tons at a grade slightly lower, 0.63% niobium, but that contains well over half a billion kilograms of niobium. To put this in perspective, there's only three producing companies in the world right now. Uh, one is the dominant player in Brazil, that being CBMM, but from a development point of view there's essentially only three primary niobium projects under development in the world right now. Ours is the only one in the United States and of course right now in the United States there is zero production, uh, there are zero mines under development other than ours as primary niobium mines and it is a 100% imported commodity. Future niobium demand looks very rosy. Uh, currently, only about 10% of world steel contains niobium. That's estimated to grow to approximately 20% over the next decade. In addition, there's also increased demand for niobium just through the intensity in the current metals that are produced. For instance, some countries such as China actually use substandard amounts of niobium with other additives and that's because they're an importer of niobium as well. They don't produce it either. So it's uh, with enormous infrastructure programs uh, being planned over the next decade in order to kickstart the economy, both in Europe and North America, there's massive demand for high strength, low alloy steel, of which niobium is a key. There's also massive demand to increase fuel economy on vehicles. So as I mentioned earlier, Adding niobium to the steel of a vehicle creates fuel savings and perhaps more importantly from a local perspective plans under development to increase and or replace a lot of the pipeline infrastructure to minimize potential leaks for oil and gas pipelines and niobium is a critical element to building that pipeline that can't be replaced. Well, we're carrying forward right now with our new resource estimate. Uh, we're confident with the size of the resource. We're, uh, at the moment, we're, we're 
processing the metallurgy end of things, which is the actual extraction of the mineral from the rocks. Uh, that's an ongoing process, takes several months, but uh, that is an ongoing process now. We're also in fairly in-depth discussions with potential partners uh, who are either in the mining industry or in the end-user industry. And these are the types of companies that will bring along the capital required to uh, put this into production. As a benefit to us, very recently uh, the House Natural Resources Committee has of course passed the National Strategic and Critical Metal Minerals Act, so now it goes to a full House vote. And this, will, this act is designed to, uh, in, in particular, speed up the permitting process for mineral, uh, for rare earth mines, for critical metal mines, and strategic metal mines, and this is certainly a critical and strategic metal.